Well, hello everybody and welcome to another week's reflection. On this, the feast, well, this weekend is the Feast of the Transfiguration, where Jesus takes Peter, James and John up a high mountain and all sorts of wonderful things happen. It's quite a technical gospel this week, actually. But I remember in 1987, which is quite a long time ago now, I took my first overseas trip to New Zealand. And one of my favourite memories was staying at a place called Mount Cook. And before my bus left uh, on the day as I was heading back to Christchurch, I decided that I would get up really early in the morning. It was probably about five o'clock or something like that and walk up, uh, walk up a path where I could sit uh, amidst the mountains and see the sun rise on Mount Cook itself, which was some distance away. The issue was, as I set out uh, with, uh, with in, in, in darkness, the valley was full of cloud. And I thought to myself, do I step, do I go back to bed, which would be sensible? Do I keep going? Anyway, I kept going. I'd, I'd made such an effort to get organized. <laughs> uh, anyway, the thing was that as I was heading up the hill, I suddenly found myself within the cloud in the valley. And it became a huge surprise to me when suddenly my head burst through the top of the cloud. And I had to kind of walk back, actually, uh, retrace my steps and, and do it again. Because I couldn't believe that I, could, I was actually walking through the cloud and there was this beautiful clarity in those New Zealand mountains. There were many life lessons to learn from this one experience. One of them was that like everything changed forever for me. I'd, I'd, I was coming to the end of a six week holiday. I started to plan my next overseas trip. I realized that it was really worth it, getting up early, coping with the potential disappointment of not seeing anything because of the cloud, but to keep going up that mountain and then to actually watch the sun rise on Mount Cook and to hear the avalanches as the sunshine warmed the freshly fallen snow at that time of year. It, it was an extraordinary experience. Peter, James and John get an extraordinary experience in this week's gospel. And it, like I said before, it's quite a technical gospel. There's much written about it and I'm not going to explain it all today. However, the two things I'd like to offer. The first is that not only was Jesus revealing something new about his divine status, and the technical term for that is he was revealing to the disciples that he was indeed the Messiah. The one who was sent to save. But maybe more profoundly, or just as profound, is that Jesus was revealing the deep heart of the gospel message and that he was going to take on the evil and the suffering of our world by doing what he did on the cross, which he foreshadowed in the few verses beforehand. There are many stories of the prophets, Moses, Elijah going up a mountain, being enfolded by cloud and hearing God speak to them words of encouragement and challenge for the people back in the plain. The disciples had a message to proclaim which was only understood really at the time of the resurrection and that's where it gets a bit tricky. But whatever mountain you have to climb, whether it's in your mind, 
whether it's physically, whether there is a challenge for you this year, I invite you to prepare, push on and expect God to speak as you deal with the circumstances, the people and the hopes and dreams of your life in relationship with God. This gospel affirms that Jesus is so close to us. He so understands our human nature and can help us to renew our relationship with the divine. I wish you well as you set off to the mountains or to the plain where you dwell. And I'll see you soon.